Hi everybody! In this video we are going to be learning about a drawing technique called chiaroscuro. Um, chiaroscuro is an Italian word, um, chiaro thinking light or bright, scuro is like dark or in shadow. So basically it's a technique in which we use um, really dramatic lighting to create lights and darks within our artwork. So if we were to look at some Renaissance artists who used chiaroscuro, uh, Leonardo da Vinci did a lot of drawings with this, as did Elbrecht Durer. Um, we can see examples of chiaroscuro in painting as well in the works of Caravaggio or Rembrandt. When we're speaking of drawing in particular, is working on toned paper using black and white as our dark and light values, and then our medium value would be the tone of the paper. So uh, many artists would do black ink and white ink or white gouache as a medium, but in this case we're going to be using charcoal and white charcoal. So I've started with a quick little sketch. Um, I have a reference photo that I took back in college. Um, you know, obviously I'm not seeing too many people right now to take photos of them, so I gotta dig through my records to see if I can find something I could work with. So I have a variety of different charcoals here that I'm going to be using. I prefer charcoal pencils. Um, that's just my preference, but you could be using stick charcoal, powdered charcoal, but you'll notice that each of them are labeled. So I've got 6B, just like a 6B pencil, it's going to be softer, um, meaning it's going to get darker. 4B, it's relatively soft, 2B in the middle, um, and then this Faber-Castell one just says hard, so we'd probably say that's like a HB or a 2H, something in that range. Um, this guy right here is vine charcoal. I love using vine charcoal when I am starting a drawing or starting a painting as a sketching agent and um, because you can just erase it so easily it's um, really soft and light um, so the marks never really feel that permanent. And then I have a white charcoal pencil. I've got some Conte crayons too if I need a little extra oomph. Um, and then for sharpening, I've got an X-Acto knife. If you've got a good enough pencil sharpener, that works too, but I think the knife works better. It doesn't break as easily. Um, and then I have a couple paint brushes. So I'm actually going to be using the paint brushes and a blending stump to kind of help incorporate the values throughout the image. So as we get started, uh, what I like to do when I start with these drawings is to kind of start with my lighter and middle values. Um, so in this case, the paper itself is the middle value. So I'm only going darker than this paper or lighter than this paper. Um, so I'm going to do kind of the medium dark values, I guess. Uh, and from there, I'm just going to slowly start to build them up as I go along. So I don't want to dive in and go too dark right away because it's much easier to go darker than it is to go lighter. In my humble opinion, at least with drawing. So I'm just going to block in some of the shadows that I'm seeing on the face. I'm keeping my marks really gentle and also close to one another. So once I start blending, I'm not really going to see the marks. It's going to be much softer and smoother. Obviously, this is a personal aesthetic choice as to what you want your marks to look like. Um, usually, I like to smooth them out first, and then I'll go in and add texture over the top of it. Um, another thing that's helpful when doing chiaroscuro drawings is, uh, you know, if you have a hard time kind of distinguishing color and value, kind of the difference between the two, um, it takes some practice. You got to get used to doing that and used to seeing the difference between those things. So if you're new to it, one way to kind of help you out is to um, just edit your photo and turn it into black and white. So by doing that, that's going to help kind of distinguish what is light and what is dark so that you don't get 
too hung up in like the intensity of the color instead of the intensity of the value. Um, that's a pretty common uh, difficulty when we're first getting started with learning to do these things. So much like painting, um, when I am working on kind of fleshing out this drawing, I'm not necessarily thinking about the features themselves that I'm drawing. I'm really looking at the image and sort of analyzing the lights and the darks in the picture. So what is light? What is dark? How do those shapes of value sort of interact with one another? Um, you know, what, how are the edges created within the image? Um, is it created with light or shadow? Uh, and doing that is really going to help kind of simplify what you're doing so that it's not quite so complex. Because I feel like a lot of times our brain really gets hung up on the schema of things. So like, what does a nose look like? What, is, what does an eye look like? And it, it starts to make things up, like you're not actually looking at what you're really seeing. It's what your brain thinks it's seeing. And that is bad news. So we want to draw what we see, not what we think we see. So once we kind of start to have some values built up right now, what I can do is I can take a paintbrush um, or my blending stump or both and I'm just going to kind of start to soften up my values. So I'm using this kind of as a blending tool. Um, one thing you're going to note is how substantially lighter in value everything gets once I go in here with the brush. So what that means is, luckily for me, I can take some of those values and kind of play around with their placement and kind of push and pull those areas to blend them just a little bit more. Um, and that's going to help me get a little more range of value as I go. So you might be realizing at this point that this is going to take a while to build up some values here if every time I go into blend it gets much lighter. So I'm starting slow and then eventually I'm going to just keep building and building and building to achieve the level of value that I want in this image. I do think it is kind of fun how we can start to paint with the charcoal. Um, this is another thing that's cool if you're using powdered charcoal um, is the way you can kind of manipulate the material on the page and move it around. But I really appreciate like the, the delicacy that is created right now um, with these softer values and how I can kind of slowly blend them in to the highlighted areas to start to create a little more volume on my features. From here, I could go in with an eraser and start to kind of pull out areas that need to remain highlighted. So I'm going to start with these more sort of blocky erasings to start with, and then I'm going to start refining them more with a different eraser as I go. But this just kind of more quickly blocks them in for me. So basically from this point, I'm just going to keep working layer by layer to slowly build up my values. So as I go in for this second layer here of blending, um, you can notice that the values are starting to build up a little bit more. Um, and basically we're just going to keep 
doing this for a while. Um, I might move in to do my light values kind of in the middle here, but um, I do like to kind of build up a lot of the mid-tones before I do any really dark values or really bright highlights. Um, I just, that's my personal preference, but I feel like my darks and lights are less likely to get muddied um, if I kind of hold off on adding those in until later. And then as I work with the hair, I'll just go in and kind of erase out highlights and kind of bring out the shadows and highlights more as I develop that. So I'll just grab an eraser and kind of go to town bringing out the details. For the smallest detailed areas, I'm going to uh, use my blending stump as it comes to a fine point. Uh, I can also use a kneaded eraser to erase out areas. Um, the benefit of this is that I can shape it into a small point to bring out fine areas of highlight that I am not really able to do with a larger eraser. It's also great for just erasing values really subtly uh, so that you, you know, maybe you just want to gently lighten up an area. You can just kind of dab it over that area. And then once it stops really erasing, you can just reshape it. So as I'm working with the eraser here, I'm just really thinking about those edges of light and shadow. Where are they sort of interacting and creating shapes uh, within the form? The benefit of starting kind of lightly like I did is it's much easier to make adjustments in the form um, rather than just going in full hog. Because once you start getting those really dark values in, it's very difficult to start to lift sections up. One thing that I really appreciate is on the chin here, how the outer edge of the chin is kind of framed by a black edge, but then the inside part of the chin is framed by some reflected light. Um, so that sort of play between light and shadow is going to be really interesting as we keep working on this drawing. My model has a very pronounced collarbone and sort of tendons in her neck so it's going to be really important to make sure that we kind of capture the the roundness of those forms. So those areas it's going to be important to use what we call cross contour marks um, where we're going around the form and not just with the form um, that helps us create kind of a little more depth and um, volume in our forms as we create them all right now i feel like i'm starting to develop some of the details that i was looking for now that I'm kind of erasing out some sections. I'll probably need to go in and refine them again, but that is kind of a never-ending process here. It's just a lot of back and forth to get what we want. So as I keep working, um, my charcoal pencil is getting pretty dull, um, so I'm just going to sharpen it a little bit. So just like you're whittling wood, you'll kind of scrape it down and I can just finely shave it to a point. I hate that noise with a passion. It's one of the reasons why I held off working with charcoal for many years because I just, ugh, that noise. Oh, I hate it. So 
Since I'm left-handed, you might notice I'm focusing more on the right side of this so that I don't uh, make my hand all messy. But um, another trick of the trade is if you find yourself smudging a lot and you want to really protect your paper, um, you can take a scrap piece of paper and just set it on top of your drawing and underneath your hand. That is going to protect your hand and the drawing, so you're going to be just rubbing your hand against the scrap paper instead of the charcoal. So that's always a good idea once you start getting to the point where you need that. And there's a lot of hair covering her face in my reference photo, and I kind of want to lessen that a little. I just feel like it's obscuring a lot of her face, and I'd like to kind of see more of that. So, um, you know, luckily I kind of know, you know enough about facial anatomy that I can kind of get the gist of what's going on on her cheekbones and everything. So I'm going to really kind of lessen the amount of hair that we're seeing on the cheekbones. I also have a few other reference photos that kind of show her uh, facial structure as well, which is a benefit to me. So yeah, when you take reference photos, I always take a ton of them, just in case. So I'm going to be using my blending stump basically to help create some crisper edges um, as I'm blending. Uh, the paintbrush tends to really fuzz out the edges and you know that's great in the larger areas but in the areas where I need sort of a harder line or a harder edge I am going to kind of work more with the blending stump and my eraser. And I'm noticing that I need to take a break now because the sunlight, <laughs> it's getting bad. Where did that come from? We'll be back. I should really put some blinds on that window. But, you know, my plants really love the sun. I really love the sun. I guess I'll just have to block it off with random drawing boards. <laughs> I love that I can blow on my drawing now to get the, the crumbs away. Can't do it at school. I got a mask on and I forget that I have a mask on and I try and blow on my drawing. Oh, it's so sad. So once I start to get to about the point I'm at right now, um, I'm going to really want to start thinking about how my marks look. Um, so like what sort of style or technique am I doing with my marks to create texture, to create uh, volume, and all of that stuff is going to be really important from this point on because I'm going to be doing less blending with my brush and more work with the pencil itself. All right, so at this stage, I am going to start adding in some of the highlighted areas with my white charcoal. Um, I want to be pretty gentle with this. I don't want to overdo it um, because I find that personally, I'm not really a big fan of the white mixing with the charcoal. Um, I feel like it just looks muddy. Um, some people can make it pull off, but I am not the biggest fan. So I want to be extra careful of any unintentional blending. And it's with this white pencil that I can really emphasize those edges of light and shadow. Which is going to kind of make some of these areas pop just a little bit more.
some of these areas I think I'm going to soften with a brush. Um, other areas I think I'm going to leave to just show the marks because I think the marks are creating some of the textures that we want to see in the skin. I think when I'm at this stage uh, I really like to think about you know like how the Renaissance artists did this because some of them chose to do the chiaroscuro in a very blended soft manner um, whereas others tend to use hatching, cross hatching to create their values. Um, and I think, you know, either way is really valid. It's just kind of depending on what sort of aesthetic direction you personally are taking. Um, but I think it's fun to just kind of see the different directions that different artists take to achieve a goal. As I'm blending this, I just want to be very careful to try not to muddy it too much with the charcoal. I want to keep kind of a crisp highlight. I want to make sure my brush is totally cleaned off before I switch from charcoal to the white. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll get muddy right away. But I'm really appreciating what's happening now, getting some of those highlights in. I think that really like brings a lot of attention to different parts of the form that we weren't really seeing earlier and really like bring some life into it. Especially these small little highlights kind of throughout the eyes and the mouth. And as I start to fill in her hair. I'm probably going to just start with like a base layer of value and then I'm going to start going in and adding some sort of textural marks to kind of softly indicate the curls. Um, you can kind of see how I started doing that in this area. Um, from here I'll probably go in and like erase out sections to start creating tendrils and then bring out some highlights to start to make it come alive. So I, I think people really get overwhelmed when they think about drawing hair because I mean there's a lot of it there so um, the, the key to doing it is to really think about it in terms of shapes. So just try and break it down into chunks as much as possible or tendrils to kind of soften the texture of the marks when I'm doing large areas especially. I like to move in a circular motion. That's going to kind of flatten out any of the texture of the paper that we really start to see. Make it a little softer. So I'm starting by breaking the hair down into just this large shape. Um, from here what I'm going to do is uh, kind of point out where I see the darkest values and just kind of fill those areas in and that's going to start to create some depth So once I start to have kind of these chunks and sections blocked off of different values, um, I like to go around some of the edges and start to define and kind of break apart the hair, give it a little more organic quality. Um, and I just do this by sort of hinting at individual tendrils or curls. At this point I'm going to be just erasing out kind of more highlighted areas to start giving the hair a little more volume. And then I will go in again with the white charcoal pencil to pull them out even further. 
and also darken up the shadows. You know, I think about an hour and a half of drawing is pretty good for today. So here we have an example of a simplified chiaroscuro on toned paper with charcoal and white charcoal. Thanks for watching and keep creating.